Hare Krishna, dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books where we have at our fingertips uh, and at our ear tips the opportunity to associate with a, an ever-liberated soul, Srila Prabhupada. Um, <clears throat> Today will be the last uh, evening of reading the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, as it is, and tomorrow, or the next day, rather, uh, we're going to start and inaugurate the uh, daily readings <coughs> again of the Srimad Bhagavatam. I've decided to do that because there are uh, missing places in the files on the YouTube and some of them are also not so clear because when we were traveling so much we didn't have good connections uh, it was hard etc uh, etc et so I want to try to put together you know on the YouTube you know a full uh, reading of the Bhagavatam without any, anything missed Okay, <clears throat> Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotram from Sri Krishna Lila Stava, text 412 through 416, by Srila Sanatana Goswami, uh, glorifying the Srimad Bhagavatam and also indirectly the Bhagavad Gita. goes like this. <clears throat> Sarva Shastrabdi Piyusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja Sarva Lokaika Drik Prada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kalidvandotita Ditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali, you are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya Prema Varshak Shadayate Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madeka Bando Mad Sangin, Mad Guru, Mad Guru, Mad Mahadana, Mad Nistadaga, Mad Bhagya, Mad Ananda Namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. A sadhu, sadhu ta dayin, atini chochata kada, hanamun chagada chen mam, premna rit kanta yokspura. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 So we reach the end of the conclusion <coughs> of the Bhagavad Gita as it is, in which Krishna is going to finalize his final instructions to Arjuna, and Arjuna is going to finalize his uh, submission 
his acceptance. He's already accepted in the 10th chapter, but here he's going to uh, once and for all tell Krishna, I'll do whatever you want me to do. And that is the way to actually receive the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Chapter 18, Conclusion, the, per the Perfection of re Renunciation, beginning with text 67. Idang te na tapaskaya na bhaktaya kadachana na cha shu shu shabet bhachang na cha mang yo bhyasu yati. This confidential knowledge may never be explained to those who are not austere or devoted or engaged in devotional service, nor to one who is envious of me. Purport Persons who have not undergone the austerities of the religious process, who have never attempted devotional service in Krishna consciousness, who have not tended a pure devotee, and especially those who are conscious of Krishna only as a historical personality or, or who are envious of the greatness of Krishna, <clears throat> should not be told this most confidential part of knowledge. It is, however, sometimes found that even demoniac persons who are envious of Krishna <clears throat> worshipping Krishna in a different way, take to, prof to the profession of explaining Bhagavad Gita in a different way to make business. But anyone who desires actually to understand Krishna must avoid such commentaries on Bhagavad Gita. Actually, <clears throat> the purpose of Bhagavad Gita <clears throat> is not understandable to those who are sensuous. Even if, even if one is not sensuous, but is strictly following the principles enjoined in the Vedic scripture, if he is not a devotee, he, he also cannot understand Krishna. And even when one poses himself as a devotee of Krishna, but is not engaged in Krishna conscious activities, he also cannot understand Krishna. There are many persons who envy Krishna because he has explained in Bhagavad Gita that he is the Supreme and that nothing is above him or equal to him. There are many persons who are envious of Krishna. Such persons should not be told of Bhagavad Gita for they cannot understand. There is no possibility of faithless persons understanding Bhagavad Gita and Krishna. Without understanding Krishna from the authority of a pure devotee, one should not try to comment upon Bhagavad Gita. Text 68 <clears throat> <clears throat> Ya idang padamang guyang <clears throat> mad bhakti shabi dasyati <clears throat> Bhaktim mai param kritva mam ebai shatya sangshayaha. For one who explains this supreme secret to the devotees, pure devotional service is guaranteed, and at the end he will come back to me. Purport Generally, it is advised that Bhagavad Gita be discussed amongst the devotees only. For those who are not devotees will understand neither Krishna nor Bhagavad Gita. Those who do not accept Krishna as he is and, Bhag and Bhagavad Gita as it is should not try to explain Bhagavad Gita whimsically and become offenders. Bhagavad Gita should be explained to persons who are ready to accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It is a subject matter for devotees only and not for philosophical speculators. Anyone, however, 
who tries sincerely to present Bhagavad Gita as it is, will advance in devotional activities and reach the pure devotional state of life. As a result of such pure devotion, he is sure to go back home, back to Godhead. Text 69 Nachatasman Manusheshu Kaschin me Priya Krita Maha Bhavita Nachame Tasman Anyak Priya Toro Bhuvi There is no servant in this world more dear to me than he, nor will, it, will there ever, ever be one more dear. I'll read that again. There is no servant in this world more dear to me than he, nor will there ever be one more dear. Text 70 Adeshyate chaya imang dharmyang sangvadam abhyayoho jnana yajnate naham ishtak syam itime matihi and I declare that he who studies this sacred conversation of ours worships me by his intelligence. Text 71 Shadhavan anasuyas cha srinuyad apiyo naraha sopimuktak subalokan prapnuyad punyakarmanam and the one who listens with faith and without envy becomes free from sinful reactions and attains to the auspicious planets where the pious dwell. Purport In the 67th verse of this chapter, the Lord explicitly forbade the Gita's being spoken to those who are envious of the Lord. In other words, Bhagavad Gita is for the devotees only. But it so happens that sometimes a devotee of the Lord will hold, will hold open class. And in that class, not all the, all the students are expected to be devotees. Why do such persons hold open class? It is, it is explained here that although not everyone is a devotee, still there are many men who are not envious of Krishna. They have faith in him as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. If such persons hear from a bona fide devotee about the Lord, the result is that they become at once free from all sinful reactions and after that attain to the planetary system where all righteous persons are situated. Therefore, by sim therefore, simply by hearing Bhagavad Gita, even a person who does not try to be a pure devotee attains the result of righteous activities. Thus, <clears throat> a pure devotee of the Lord gives everyone a chance to become free from all sinful reactions <clears throat> and to become a devotee of the Lord. Generally, those who are free from sinful reactions, those who are righteous, very easily take to Krishna consciousness. The word punya karmanam is very significant here. This refers to the performance of great sacrifices like the ashramedha yagya mentioned in the Vedic literature. Those who are righteous in performing devotional service but who are not pure can attain the planetary system of the pole star or Dhruva Loka where Dhruva Maharaj is presiding. He is a great devotee of the Lord and he has a special planet which is called the pole star. Text 72 Kach Chit a touch chutang parta twayai kag grina chetasa kach chit agyana samoha pranashtas te dananjaya. 
O son of Prita, O conqueror of wealth, have you heard this with an attentive mind? And are your ignorance and illusion now dispelled? Purport The Lord was acting as the spiritual master of Arjuna. Therefore, it was his duty to inquire from Arjuna whether he understood the whole Bhagavad Gita in the proper perspective. If not, the Lord was ready to re-explain any point or the whole Bhagavad Gita, if so required. Actually, anyone who hears Bhagavad Gita from a bona fide spiritual master like Krishna or his representative will find that all his ignorance is dispelled. Bhagavad Gita is not an ordinary book written by a poet or fiction writer. It is spoken by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Any person fortunate enough to hear these teachings from Krishna or from his bona fide spiritual representative is sure to become a liberated person and get out of the darkness of ignorance. Text 73 Arjuna Uvacha Nashto Moha Smritir Labda Twat Prasadan Mayachuta Stito Smi Gatasandeha Karishe Bachanam Tava Arjuna said, My dear Krishna, O infallible one, my illusion is now gone. I have regained my memory by your mercy. I am now firm and free from doubt and am prepared to act according to your instructions. Purport <clears throat> The constitutional position of a living entity represented by Arjuna is that he has to act according to the order of the Supreme Lord. He is meant for self-discipline. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says that the actual position of the living entity is that of an eternal servant of the Supreme Lord. Forgetting this principle, the living entity becomes conditioned by material nature. But in serving the Supreme Lord, he becomes the liberated servant of God. The living entity's constitutional position is to be a servitor. He has to serve either the illusory Maya or the Supreme Lord. If he serves the Supreme Lord, he is in his normal condition. But if he prefers to serve the illusory external energy, then certainly he will be in bondage. In illusion, the living entity is serving in this material world. He is bound by his lust and desires, yet he thinks of himself as the master of the world. This is called illusion. When a person is liberated, his illusion is over, and he voluntarily surrenders unto the Supreme to act according to his desires. The last illusion, the last snare of Maya, is to, to trap the living entity, is the proposition that he is God. The living entity thinks that he is no longer a conditioned soul, but God. He is so unintelligent that he does not think that if he were God, then how could he be in doubt? That he does not consider. So that is the last snare of illusion. Actually, to become free from the illusory energy is to understand Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and agree to act according to His order. The word moha is very important in this verse. Moha refers to that which is opposed to knowledge. Actually, Real knowledge is the understanding that every living being is eternally a servitor of the Lord. But instead of thinking oneself in that position, 
the living entity thinks that he is not a servant, that he is the master of this material world, for he wants to lord it over the material energy, the material nature. That is his illusion. This illusion can be overcome by the mercy of the Lord or by the mercy of a pure devotee. When that illusion is over, one agrees to act in Krishna Consciousness. Krishna Consciousness <clears throat> is acting according to Krishna's order. A conditioned soul, illusioned by the external energy of matter, does not know that the Supreme Lord is the Master who is full of knowledge and who is the proprietor of everything. Whatever he desires, he can bestow upon his devotees. He is the friend of everyone, and he is especially inclined to his devotee. He is the controller of this material nature <clears throat> and of all living entities. He is also the controller of inexhaustible time, and he is full of all opulences and all potencies. The Supreme Personality of Godhead can even give himself to the devotee. One who does not know him is under the spell of illusion. He does not become a devotee, but a servitor of Maya. Arjuna, however, after hearing Bhagavad Gita from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, becomes free from all illusion. He could understand that Krishna was not only his friend, but the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he understood Krishna factually. So to study Bhagavad Gita is to understand Krishna factually. When a person is in full knowledge, he naturally surrenders to Krishna. When Krishna understood that it was Krishna's plan to reduce the unnecessary increase of population, he agreed to fight according to Krishna's desire. He again took up his weapons his arrows and bow, to fight under the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Text 74 <clears throat> Sanjaya Uvacha Ityaham Vasudevasya Partasya Chamahatmanaha Sangvadam Imam Ashrausham Adbutam Ramaharshanam. Sanjaya said, Thus I have heard the conversation of two great souls, Krishna and Arjuna. And so wonderful is that message that my hair is standing on end. Purport. In the beginning of Bhagavad Gita, Dhritarashtra inquired from his secretary, Sanjaya. <clears throat> what happened on the battlefield of Kurukshetra? The entire study was related to the heart. The entire study was related to the heart of Sanjaya by the grace of his spiritual master, Vyas. He thus explained the theme of the battlefield. The conversation was wonderful because such an important conversation between two great souls had never taken place before and would not take place again. It was wonderful because the Supreme Personality of Godhead was speaking about Himself and His energies to the living entity, Arjuna, a great devotee of the Lord. If we follow in the footsteps of Arjuna to understand Krishna, then our life will be happy and successful. Sanjaya realized this and, and, he, and, and as he began to understand it, he related the conversation to Dhritarashtra. Now it is concluded that wherever there is Krishna and Arjuna, there is victory. Text 75 <clears throat> Vyasa prasadach trutavyan etad guya mahang padam Yogam Yogeshwarat Krishnat Sakshat Katayatak Swayam. By the mercy of Vyas, 
I have heard these most wonderful talks directly from the master of all mysticism, Krishna, who was speaking personally to Arjuna. Purport Vyas was the spiritual master of Sanjaya, and Sanjaya admits that he was it was by Vyasa's mercy that he could understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This means that one has to understand Krishna not directly, but through the medium of the spiritual master. The spiritual master is the transparent medium, although it is true that the experience is still direct. This is the mystery of the disciplic succession. When the spiritual master is bona fide, then one can hear Bhagavad Gita directly, as Arjuna heard it. There are many mystics and yogis all over the world, but Krishna is the master of all yoga systems. Krishna's instruction is explicitly stated in Bhagavad Gita, surrender unto Krishna. One who does so is the topmost yogi. This is confirmed in the last verse of the sixth chapter, Yoginam Apisarvesham. Narada is the direct disciple of Krishna and the spiritual master of Vyas. Therefore, Vyas is as bona fide as Arjuna because he comes in the disciplic succession and Sanjaya is the direct disciple of Vyas. Therefore, by the grace of Vyas, Sanjaya's senses were purified and he could see and hear Krishna directly. One who directly hears Krishna can understand this confidential knowledge. If one does not come to the disciplic succession, he cannot hear Krishna. Therefore, his knowledge is always imperfect, at least as far as understanding Bhagavad Gita is concerned. In, in, the, in Bhagavad Gita, all the yoga systems, karma, karma yoga, jnana yoga, and bhakti yoga are explained. Krishna is the master of all such mysticism. It is to be understood, however, that as Arjuna was fortunate enough to understand Krishna directly, so by the grace of Vyas, Sanjaya was also able to hear Krishna directly. Actually, there is no difference between hearing directly from Krishna and hearing directly from Krishna via a bona fide spiritual master like Vyas. The spiritual master is the representative of Vyasadeva also. Therefore, according to the Vedic system, on the birthday of the spiritual master, the disciples conduct the ceremony called Vyasa Puja. Text 76 Rajan samsmritya samsmritya samvadam imamadbhutam keshavajar keshavar janunak keshavar janunok punyam rishyami chamahur muhu O King, as I repeatedly recall this wondrous and holy dialogue between Krishna and Arjuna, I take pleasure being thrilled at every moment. PURPORT The understanding of Bhagavad Gita is so transcendental that anyone who becomes conversant with the topics of Arjuna and Krishna becomes righteous and he cannot forget such talks. This is the transcendental position of spiritual life. In other words, one who hears the Gita from the right source, directly from Krishna, attains full Krishna consciousness. The result of Krishna consciousness is that one becomes increasingly enlightened and he enjoys life with a thrill, not only for some time, but at every moment. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Text 77. Tach chasang srit chasang srit ya rupam atyad bhutam harehe vismayo me mahan rajan vishami 
Japona Punaha. O King, as I remember the wonderful form of Lord Krishna, I am struck with wonder more and more, and I rejoice again and again. Purport It appears that Sanjaya also, by the grace of Vyas, could see the universal form Krishna exhibited to Arjuna. It is of course said that Lord Krishna had never exhibited such a form before. It was exhibited to Arjuna only, yet some great devotees could, could also see the universal form of Krishna when it was shown to Arjuna, and Vyas was one of them. He is one of the great devotees of the Lord, and he is considered to be a powerful incarnation of Krishna. Vyas disclosed this to his disciple Sanjaya, who remembered that wonderful form of Krishna exhibited to Arjuna and enjoyed it repeatedly. Text 78 <clears throat> Yatra Yogeshwada Krishna Yatra Parto Danur Daraha Tatra Shir Vijayo Bhutir Dhruva Nitir Matir Mama Whenever there is Krishna, the master of all mystics, and wherever there is Arjuna, the supreme archer, there will also be, there will also certainly be opulence, victory, extraordinary power, and morality. That is my position. That is my opinion. Purport. The Bhagavad Gita began with an inquiry of Dhritarashtras. He was hopeful of the victory of his sons, assisted by great warriors like Bhishma, Drona, and Karna. He was hopeful that the, that the victory would be on his side. But after describing the scene on the battlefield, Sanjaya told the king, You are thinking of victory, but my opinion is that where Krishna and Arjuna are present, there will be all good fortune. He directly confirmed that Dhritarashtra could not expect victory for his side. Victory was certain for the side of Ar Arjuna because Krishna was there. Krishna's acceptance of the post of charioteer for Arjuna was an exhibition of another opulence. Krishna is full of opulences and renunciation is one of them. There are many instances of such renunciation for Krishna is also the master of renunciation. The fight was actually between Duryodhana and Yudhishthira. Arjuna was fighting on behalf of his elder brother, Yudhishthira. Because Krishna and Arjuna were on the side of Yudhishthira, Yudhishthira's victory was certain. The battle was to, to decide who would rule the world, and Sanjaya predicted that the power would be transferred to Yudhishthira. It is also predicted here that Yudhishthira, after gaining victory in this battle, would flourish more and more, because not only was he righteous and pious, but he was also a strict moralist. He never spoke a lie during his life. There are many less intelligent persons who take Bhagavad Gita to be a discussion of topics between two friends on a battlefield. But such a book cannot be scripture. Some may protest that Arjuna incited Arjuna, that some may protest that Krishna incited Arjuna to fight, which is immoral. But the reality of the situation is clearly stated. Bhagavad Gita is the supreme instruction in morality. The supreme instruction of morality is stated in the ninth chapter, in the thirty-fourth verse, Manmana Bhavamad Bhakta. One must become a devotee of Krishna, and the essence of all religion is to surrender unto Krishna. Sarvadharman Puritjaja Mamekam Sharanam Braja. The instructions of Bhagavad Gita constitute 
the supreme process of religion and of morality. All other processes may be purifying and may lead to this process, but the last instruction of the Gita is the last word in all morality and religion. Surrender unto Krishna. This is the verdict of the 18th chapter. From Bhagavad Gita we can understand that to realize oneself by philosophical speculation and by meditation is one process, but to fully surrender unto Krishna is the highest per perfection. This is the essence of the teachings of Bhagavad Gita. The path of regulative principles according to the orders of social life and according to the different courses of religion may be a confidential path of knowledge. But although the rituals of religion are confidential, meditation and cultivation of knowledge are still more confidential. And surrender unto Krishna in devotional service is in full Krishna consciousness is the most confidential instruction. That is the essence of the 18th chapter. Another feature of Bhagavad Gita is that the actual truth is the Supreme Personality of God. Another feature of Bhagavad Gita is that the actual truth is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. The Absolute Truth is realized in three features, impersonal Brahman, localized Paramatma, and ultimately the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. Perfect knowledge of the Absolute Truth means perfect knowledge of Krishna. If one understands Krishna, then all the departments of knowledge are part and parcel. <clears throat> if one understands Krishna, then all the departments of knowledge are part and parcel of that understanding. Krishna is transcendental, for he is always situated in his eternal, eternal, internal potency. The living entities are manifested. <clears throat> The living entities are manifested of his, inter of his energy and are divided into two classes, eternally conditioned and eternally liberated. Such living entities are innumerable and they are considered fundamental parts of Krishna. Material energy is manifested into 24 divisions. The creation is effected by eternal time and it is created and dissolved by external energy. This manifestation of the cosmic world repeatedly becomes visible and invisible. In Bhagavad Gita, five principal subject matters have been discussed. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, material nature, the living entities, eternal time, and all kinds of activities. All is dependent on the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. All conceptions of the Absolute Truth, impersonal Brahman, localized Paramatma, and any other transcendental conception exist within the category of understanding the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Although superficially, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the living entity, material nature, in time appear to be different. Nothing is different from the Supreme. But the Supreme is always different from everything. Lord Chaitanya's philosophy is that of inconceivable oneness and difference. This system of philosophy constitutes perfect knowledge of the Absolute Truth. The living entity in his original position is pure spirit. He is just like an atomic particle of the Supreme Spirit. Thus, Lord Krishna may be compared to the sun and the living entities to sunshine. Because the living entities are the marginal energy of Krishna, they have a tendency to be in contact either with the material energy or with the spiritual energy. 
In other words, the living entity is situated between the two energies of the Lord. And because he belongs, in other words, this is such an important point. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'll read it again. In other words, the living entity is situated between the two energies of the Lord. And because he belongs to the superior energy of the Lord, he has a particle of independence. By proper, by proper use of that independence, he, be, he comes under the direct order of Krishna. Thus, he attains his normal condition in the pleasure-giving potency. What a purport. Explains the whole philosophy, top to bottom, inside and out. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the 18th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita in the matter of its conclusion, the perfection, the perfection of renunciation. All glories to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the speaker of Bhagavad Gita as it is the Supreme Absolute per Truth of Knowledge and Arjuna, the perfect disciple, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. It's interesting to note that the, during the whole conversation, Arjuna surrendered from the very beginning to Krishna as his spiritual master. But then he still had questions and even doubts and he continued to present them before Krishna and have them clarified and removed. It's interesting. So the, the conclusion that I draw from this is, we, is, it, is that we must continue to hear this Bhagavad Gita as it is again and again and again and again for the rest of our lives. And then the influence of time which is all powerful and which causes us to forget even if we stop doing something for just a short time, what to speak of, a long time, uh, then we will be able to remember Krishna at the time we depart this body and go back to the spiritual world and be released from this uh, material energy, which is so perplexing and such a cause of misery uh, for the conditioned soul. So we all be happy. Chant Hare Krishna, read Bhagavad Gita, accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead and absorb yourself in devotional service to Him and you'll be happy. Hare Krishna. Okay, an important night. We finish the Bhagavad Gita as it is. Seems like just a couple of days ago, no, no. It's amazing how Krishna seems to manipulate time to make time seems like it's going faster and seems like it's going slower depending on what's happening to us. Mm -hmm. But actually time is time. It is Krishna, Krishna's energy. And it goes the same all the time. Mm -hmm. Just from our position, our perspective, we think it goes by faster or slower. Okay, but I think I should read the note about the second edition because there's so much controversy and so much, don't mind, nonsense being spoken by persons. This is a note about the second edition. For the benefit of readers who have become familiar with the first edition of the Bhagavad Gita as it is, a few words about this second edition seem in order. Although in most respects the two editions are the same, the editors of the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust have gone back to the oldest manuscripts in their archives to make this second edition even more faithful to Śrīla Prabhupāda's original work. Śrīla Prabhupāda finished Bhagavad Gita as it is in 1967, two years after he came from India to America. The Macmillan, the, the Macmillan Company published an abridged edition 
1968 and the first unabridged edition in 1972. The New American Disciples, who helped Srila Prabhupada ready the manuscript for publication, struggled with several difficulties. Those who transcribed this, his taped dictation sometimes found his heavily accented English hard to follow and his Sanskrit quotations strange to their ears. The Sanskrit editors had to do their best with the manuscripts spotted with gaps and phonetic approximations. Yet their effort to publish Srila Prabhupada's work was a success, and Bhagavad Gita as it is has become the standard edition for scholars and devotees around the world. For this second edition, however, Srila Prabhupada's disciples had the benefit of having worked with his books for 15 years. The English editors were familiar with his philosophy and language, and the Sanskrit editors were now by now accomplished scholars. And now they were able to see their way through perplexities in the manuscript by consulting the same Sanskrit commentaries Srila Prabhupada consulted when writing Bhagavad Gita as it is. The result is a work of even greater richness and authenticity. The word-for-word -word Sanskrit English equivalents now follow more closely the standard of Srila Prabhupada's other books and are therefore more clear and precise. In places, the translations, although already correct, have been revised to come closer to the original Sanskrit and to Srila Prabhupada's original dictation. In the Bhaktivedanta purports, many passages lost to the original edition have been restored to their places. And Sanskrit quotations, whose sources were unnamed in the first edition, had now appear with full references to chapter and verse. The Publishers Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so there it is. All right. We'll open up the airwaves to the assembled sages out there in cyberspace all over the world. Please uh, give us your reflections on the experience of hearing Bhagavad Gita as it is all the way through, including all the purports, cover to cover, like we do. Hare Krishna. First is from Gopakanya Devi Dasi. <coughs> Gopakanya <coughs> Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna. Jai Maharaj. Hare Krishna. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. <coughs> Jai all glories to His Divine Grace. Hare Bo. From Rati Manjari. Hare Krishna Rati. She says, Jai Guru Maharaj, take us to the transcendental finale. <laughs> Hare Krishna. I hope so. It'll take us a time to read the whole Bhagavatam. Of course, we read it once already. This was uh, coming up to March. It'll be four years. Huh? Four years. And except for those times when I was indisposed, from uh, we read every day since then. Therefore, we have more than 160, maybe 170 videos of all these books read cover to cover and generally straight without commentary in between and we've saved the time for commentary or questions and answers or reflections from the devotees for the end purposefully so that we can hear Srila Prabhupada's train of thought all the way through. Uh, I know devotees and I've had experience myself that sometimes we have uh, had readings in which we comment you know you know, either sentence by sentence or every every few sentences or every purport. And I've found that the, the conversation t tends to go off very easily as devotees speculate what they think or bring in other opinions and so many things. So I'm convinced that this is the, a very valuable way to read Prabhupada's books, just straight through and let 
the power of Srila Prabhupada's train of thought uh, purify our hearts and give real understanding to our intelligence. Um, therefore, it is not an academic exercise. It is not that you can learn it by, by becoming very learned or by becoming a scholar or memorizing l large parts of it. You may do that, as we heard in this last section that we just read. We may do that, but if we're not a devotee of Krishna, then we can't understand and we can't comment. And even if we are a devotee of Krishna, at, at, at the end, until we fully surrender to Krishna, then we cannot fully understand. So take Arjuna's example of how he understood and how he accepted. I ask your questions, put forward your doubts, but when you hear the answers that are logical, clear, common sense, and scripture, or in the parampara directly from Krishna, without being changed in the essence, there may be words here and there changed in an, edit, an, an editorial edition, but the, but the essence of the scripture, the message, is exactly the same. That is my personal experience of working with our uh, colleagues, the ed editorial review board, which is going through and making a final uh, suggestions that will then be finally approved by the editorial board on the BBT and, and the BBT. And hopefully we will get, you know, a uh, final polished version of the Bhagavad Gita that will be more acceptable to everyone. And those who cannot see that or accept that Srila Prabhupada's instruction, uh, one of his last instructions actually, that all of his books be gone through and corrections made uh, to make it as perfect as possible and we have the letters of his words in writing ex that is exactly what he wanted to make it as perfect as possible he admitted that when he came to the west uh, it was not possible for him to write with the uh, English completely correct uh, even though he was a great poet and a great writer uh, still a second language is not easy to grasp and to uh, not to grasp but to put it into a, a polished per perfectly polished state and he wanted that he didn't expect it to, to stay the same about the sources of of this version uh, The first six chapters of the Gita, of the, of the uh, manuscript, was actually typed by Srila Prabhupada's hand. So for the six, first six chapters, we actually have Prabhupada's thoughts exactly. Mm. And in the next six, uh, rest of the book, most of it was done by transcription of voice through a dictaphone. And because Srila Prabhupada was so frugal, I mean, we can't imagine what frugality is. He would use the same tape again and again. So the, the original dictation was, in most cases, lost. But we do have the transcription of the devotees from Srila Prabhupada's voice. And that's where mostly uh, the problems came in. Mm -hmm. But even, even from the beginning, for instance, the uh, first edition of the unabridged Collier Mamil edition had Blessed Lord said in, in the verses instead of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Srila Prabhupada actually typed with his own hands the Supreme Personality of Godhead in the Sanskrit transliterations in the verses and in the purports. Mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, when it came clear that the Bhagavad Gita, the first edition, needed to be edited, 
uh, by the decision of the GBC body and the BBT trustees and the BBT editors. They all unanimously accepted Jai Dwaita Maharaj as the only person who could properly do it. And that's what he did. And the Dravida, as a more or less uh, uh, sincere disciple of Srila Prabhupada, and worked very closely with Jai Dwaita Maharaj from the beginning of his editorial uh, uh, career, and also Gopi Pranadana Prabhu, who was not in the beginning in the Sanskrit team, but who became extremely expert over the years and joined the team to uh, put his intelligence and his expertise and knowledge of Shiva Prabhupada's philosophy and the science as he happened to read the books uh, with the original san to the, in the original Sanskrit. Uh, together they uh, um, uh, finished this uh, second edition and I'm telling you from having studied it and read it and now worked on it on that level with you know six other very erudite scholars and devotees uh, it's as good as it gets mm -hmm. and it's uh, message is crystal clear and the English is crystal clear mm -hmm. as you just experienced yourself all of you, because I read the Gita from the uh, manuscript that was uh, given to me by Dravida with all the most recent changes in. So if you thought, well, what was wrong with that? It's because we read the last edited edition mm -hmm. or, or manuscript that we have. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Radhi. Keep up the good work. Sudevi Dasi says Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Sudevi Dasi. From Braj Balaba. Hey Braj, Hare Krishna. He says Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. It seems verse 71 shows us insight into Prabhupada's real mercy. He gave everyone a chance to become free from sinful reactions and become a devotee. Yes. Just by hearing the Bhagavad Gita and applying the instructions, even if we're not pure in the beginning, just by hearing submissively, we'll get all of that. True. Thank you, Braj, for bringing that out. So I had a question. Yes, please. Do those who go to the pole star advance more easily? Are they more easily able to advance? You know, we've never heard this. I've never heard it from Srila Prabhupada. But we do know that the pole star uh, was Vishnu's planet. And he gave it to Dhruva. That's in the text of the Bhagavatam. So, yes, I would say that Pole star is a spiritual planet in the material world. So the answer would be yes. They do advance easier or they relish more or whatever you want to call it. I'm sure that's different in every individual case as is most things are. So we can't make a rule out of it. It wouldn't be right to make a rule out of anything in spontaneous, pure, loving, devotional service to the Lord, actually. But, uh, yes, Hare Krishna. From Bhakta Rupa. But that doesn't mean that we should make Dhruva Loka our goal, because even though it's a spiritual planet, it's still in the material universe. So therefore, we should still make it our goal to go back to Goloka Vrindavan, Hare Krishna. Haribol Bhakta Rupa. Haven't heard from you for a while. Happy to hear from you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you for reading and please accept my humble obeisances. Glories to Srila Prabhupada. His divine grace. 
Congratulations on finishing the Gita. Sad I missed so many readings because of the marathon, but I'll try to catch up next year. I've unfortunately been knocked out of the marathon for the past week as I got COVID. Ooh, ouch. It's, it's knocked me sideways going from 100 miles an hour to a standstill. Oh, it feels like I've completely forgotten everything about Krishna conscious philosophy and haven't read nicely because my attention span is gone. Wow. In verse 73, Arjuna regained his memory and his illusion was dispelled. How can I get out of my little personal pity party, rise <laughs> out of this illusory fog, and get my mind back in the game? Well... It sounds like it already is. It's just you're sick, so you have to... Uh, I mean, I've heard so many things about this that some people just... It's like a cold or a flu and they just have some symptoms and they get all over it. But some t some people have to... They have long-term uh, problems. I pray to Krishna that you don't have those long-term problems and that you come back to, natu to, to your natural position very soon. It sounds like you're al already on your way just by how you're talking. I can still hear you coming through, even though you say you don't have any memory at all. That's not true. Absolutely not true. You never lose anything. You never lose anything you've gained in Krishna consciousness. Ever. It just sometimes is more clear and more, more precise and concise and sometimes, you know, it, be it becomes less clear or less in the front that's the modes of nature working but the advancement that you get in devotional life in devotional service especially by hearing these books is permanent so don't worry you'll never lose it Hare Krishna from Gopal Roy yes Gopal Roy I was appreciating how Sanjaya said that he, quote, repeatedly recalls this dialogue, unquote. Mm. Mm. Similarly, every time I read the Bhagavad Gita, I discover more and more with every reading. The first time I read it, I only read the verses, not the purports, mm. and thought to myself that now I have read the, that I have now read the Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> but I did not understand a thing. But the more I rendered service, the more Krishna revealed this wonderful dialogue to me. Please bless me. Do never take the Bhagavad Gita for granted. Your servant, Gopal Roy Das. Hari Bol, Gopal Roy. Thank you for that lovely reflection. Thank you. And I point out that probably, I mean, I wasn't there inside you when you went through the, all of this, <clears throat> but I'm sure that when you read the purports, you understood it more. And as you read the purports more and more, that's why Śrīla Prabhupāda told Hayagriva, when Hayagriva started to pester him about the, the ver verses, Śrīla Prabhupāda told him, the, the purports are more important than the verses. I don't want to spend as much time on the verses as the purports. So he gave him permission to use Bhagavad Gita's translations of other persons who were not, who were good translations, not Mayavad translations. And whether he understood it not completely or not, that's, that, I don't know. But uh, he, he did use uh, Radha Krishna's uh, translations of some of the verses of the Gitas to change certain things, including the Blessed Lord instead of the Supreme Personality of Godhead which was uh, cleared up and, uh, and edited by Jai Dwaita Maharaj and Dravida. So, um, yeah, the purports are the most important thing because they give us the clear understanding of what the verses are saying. Hare Krishna. From Rati Manjari? Yes, Rati. She says, Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you for completing yet another reading of Sri Bhagavad Gita. This is my second hearing of the Gita from you, 
and slowly by your mercy I am starting to understand what you mean about the need to go on hearing and reading the Bhagavad Gita. I look forward to hearing the Gita many more times. Mm. I also have a question. Mm. The Gita was related to Dhritarashtra by, by Sanjaya. At the end, Sanjaya was in ecstasy. Is it known what the effect of the Gita was on Dhritarashtra? Oh yes, it's quite known. <coughs> it was revealed by Vidura in the Srimad Bhagavatam when he came back after having been insulted by Duryodhana. He left the palace and went on pilgrimage and he met Uddhava during that time and then finally met Maitreya and by Uddhava's uh, encouragement and advice he he heard the uh, Bhagavad Gita from Maitreya who by the way was present when Krishna gave Uddhava his last instructions before Uddhava went north to Badarikashram and that's when he met uh, Vidura so when Vidura went back then to the uh, palace and met Dhritarashtra. This was after the battle of Kurukshetra now. So when he just gave him the sauce mm -hmm. big time, meaning that Dhritarashtra didn't get very much. Even though he was right there, even though he saw Krishna. Just like Daksha. Daksha was a mind-born son of Brahma. Very elevated person. But he was meant to be a prajapati, to to increase the population through sex, and also in opulence, and uh, performance of huge sacrifices, Vedic sacrifices. So because his mind was so much absorbed in those uh, that approach, even when Krishna came before him, when Vishnu came before him, he didn't know what to say. He had made a huge offense to uh, Lord Shiva, which means he cannot have understood anything of the Gita if you make a Lord, an offense against Lord Shiva. <laughs> that speaks for itself. So, yes, the unfortunate for Dhritarashtra at the moment, he didn't understand. He was too attached to his sons and too attached to winning. Therefore, it says, Krishna says, just after he gave the final instruction, he said, uh, whoever uh, studies this conversation uh, worships me by his intelligence. And it should not be spoken to someone who is envious, who, who, is not, who have not tended a pure devotee. So the answer was, he didn't get very much, if anything. And then he lived in the house of Yudhishthir, you know, even after all his fam all his sons were killed. And yet he lived in the house of, U of Yudhishthir and, and, and was, was taken care of by Yudhishthir, who was then the king, and it was shameless. Mm -hmm. So therefore Vidura told him, you know, you're just like a kept dog. Mm -hmm. Get out of here immediately. And he finally did heard from the, from the devotee of Krishna, Vidura. Even though Vidura was his brother, wait, was he, was Vidura, was Vidura Dhritarashtra's brother, was his step something, I can't remember offhand. There goes my memory at the after 76 or 75, it starts to go. Anyway, the essence of what I said is the same. Not changed at all. Hare Krishna. Dial Nitai. Jai Dial Nitai. Hare Bo. He says, All glories to Sri Sri Guru and Goranga. Thank you, Sri the Guru Maharaj, for this amazing and very helpful reading of the entire Bhagavad Gita as it is. 
Thank you, your servant, Dharanitai Das. Hare Krishna, Dharanitai. Thank you very much for your encouragement. I keep thinking that my voice, I, every once in a while, not all the time, but I sometimes spot check how I'm sounding, and I think that my reading has a lot to be desired, and I hope to improve as we go along. And it's also different, as somebody pointed out to me the other day, that when we do the audio books, we have the benefit of being able to go back over things and re-record things to make it just right. And when you're in the phone, uh, a booth, recording booth, you hear your voice very clearly and everything comes out more clear and more uh, in that sense. So you don't get the same uh, ev effect of the spontaneous nature of a reading with other personalities in involved, but still, I want to make the readings as good as the recordings. Hare Krishna. I will try my best. Hare Bo. From Ananda Murthy, Devi Dasan. Jai Ananda Murthy, Hare Bo. Dear Guru Maharaj and all devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Thank you so much for reading Srimad <coughs> Bhagavad Gita, which is most confidential knowledge for the devotees. I thought. This knowledge is to read every day and distribute. Yesterday I have distributed three Bhagavad Gita and three Prabhupada Lilamrita during lunch break. During lunch break. Good. Those were all students and they were very happy to receive this knowledge. Very good. I thank you for giving me this opportunity to serve Srimad Bhagavad Gita through serving you. Dear Gurudev, because you become pleased, I execute this service to distribute so that you are my life. Thank you so much for reading. Thank you very much, uh, Anandamurti. That was very deep, very touching, very moving. And uh, yeah, you purchased me with that. Hare Krishna. From Bhakta Rupa. Haribo Bhaktarupa. He says, thanks Maharaj, very kind. <laughs> Hare Krishna. And from Rati Manjari. Yes, Rati. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. Your answer mentioned some of the heroes of the Srimad Bhagavatam and increased my desire to hear the Srimad Bhagavatam from you once again. Oh, yes. We'll start. Like I said, probably I won't read tomorrow night. Let's just make it, let's just say it like it is. I'm not going to read Bhagav the, the daily readings because my voice is going to be very, very, I don't know what to say. There, I don't know how much if there will be left al already after reading the whole Gita tomorrow. It will probably take eight hours. So thank you very much for that encouragement. And we'll, day after tomorrow, we will, uh, like I said, in, in, in inaugurate the reading of the Srimad Bhagavatam again, which I think I'm really looking forward to this really looking forward to this and I'll share with you whatever you know Prabhupada has taught me and and this Bhagavatam is it's it, it starts off where the Bhagavad Gita leaves off it's natural it's a natural progression whenever whenever Srila Prabhupada was talking about how important it is to read all of his books he would always mention Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and Chaitanya Charitamrita. He wouldn't so much mention the others, although they were also important. Nectar devotion, teachings of Lord Chaitanya, the Krishna book, and then all the small books also. They're all important, but they're all based on these books. All other corollary scriptures, even the Rasa Shastras of the Goswamis, they're all based on these books. Undergraduate, graduate, postgraduate. Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita. Practically the only books on my shelf now. Things have been narrowed down. So thank you very much. Hare Krishna. And from Bhakti Sebastian. Yes, Bhakti Sebastian. Hare Bo. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Thank you so much. I am so grateful 
This reading is my life. Please allow me to serve you more and more. Your servant, Bhakta Sebastian. Thank you, Bhakta Sebastian, and I'm very much looking forward to that. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Rati Mandrai says, And how nice it is that we finish the Bhagavad Gita right before Gita Jayanti tomorrow. Isn't it? Isn't it? And then we'll start the Bhagavatam the day after Gita Jayanti. I mean, how is that not an arrangement by Krishna. It must be an arrangement by Krishna. So here we are, and safe and sound, in the safe haven, and we pray that more and more devotees will tune in over time. I think they will, but uh, this has left something, even when I go, which I will eventually, everyone does. So when, but, but why will have left, you know, uh, on the YouTube, I don't know if Facebook will be there around. I think Prishik's YouTube will stay longer. And I'm still thinking about going over to the YouTube for the, you know, exchange, the, the live exchange. It's better video and uh, safer, I think. But anyway, we have to get a thousand. We have now 700 and over 750 and we need to get to a thousand. So please make a little uh, campaign, all your friends and devotees that you know, and try to get them to uh, subscribe to the Daily Readings of Shiva Prabhupada's Books YouTube channel. When we get to a thousand, then I'll very seriously consider changing it over to the YouTube for the daily, for the live readings because they'll still be there you know just like they were like they are now and all that will help you know uh, my Shashi, who is the one that has to upload them every day make, make less, less work for him yes it's a Krishna's arrangement finish the Bhagavad Gita the day before Gita, Gita Jayanti start the Srimad Bhagavatam the day after Gita Jayanti Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna and I will have heard the whole Gita you know from my own mouth into my own ear which is really potent uh, all the way through just before we start the Bhagavatam so by the mercy of the Vaishnavas uh, hopefully uh, the reading will come even better of the Bhagavatam Hare Krishna. From Yadutama. Haribo Yadutama. He says, Dear Gurudev, please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Prabhupada. I feel so lucky to have Krishna's, Arjuna's, and Srila Prabhupada's association by your mercy. All I can say is that. As I grow, I have more and more of a desire to become pure by following these instructions so that I can assist you in fulfilling Sri the Prabhupada's mission. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Dutama. Thank you very much for your uh, loving service. Hare Krishna. Uh, another comment from Rati Manjari? Yes, Rati. Actually, it is your fresh enthusiasm about Sri the Prabhupada's books which is impressive and able to attract my my dusty mind to come closer to Krishna. <coughs> Very good. That's now recorded. <laughs> <laughs> so I won't let you get away. And from Bhakta Jason. Yes, Bhakta Jason. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances or glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Thank you very much for sometimes repeating the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita during the questions and answers. It helps me to hear it again and again so I don't forget, specifically how we won't ever lose what progress we have already gained. It's really inspiring. Hare Krishna, very good, thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Bo. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll close our reading of the Bhagavad Gita as it is now and uh, day after tomorrow we'll take it up again 
the reading of the Srimad Bhagavatam cover to cover and that's quite an endeavor so if you read 41 pages a day uh, you will read the Bhagavatam in one year so I anticipate that this is going to take more than a year and let us see I don't remember how long we were reading when we first started because I was reading the Bhagavatam when we first started seems like we're reading a little less reading and the to total is a bit, a little bit less but this has facilitated also the, the uploading to the YouTube and so many other things so I'll probably keep it pretty much the same maybe a little bit uh, longer let's see how it unfolds Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is Ki Jai Samabeda Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Samabeda Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo Thank you very much for being there and for being who you are and for your attachment to Srila Prabhupada's for hearing Srila Prabhupada's books and we'll see you day after tomorrow same time, same place, same topic the glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead taken to another level mm -hmm. Hare Krishna see you then <laughs>